everyone, welcome to Stay at Home Steam. Today we're going to be learning a screen-free coding game that you can create yourself with household items. Before you get started, make sure you have all your materials. You will need paper, some small objects, Legos work really well for this game. I'm using buttons and a salt and pepper shaker. You also need a pair of scissors, a writing utensil like a marker, and a ruler. The first thing to do is create the grid. You can either print out the program materials from the library website, or you can draw your own. For the youngest kids, creating a simple grid is best. So something like this four by four. You can use a ruler and markers to draw it out. For older kids, you can add more squares, maybe a seven by seven or even a 10 by 10. Once you've got your grid created, you need to make directional cards. You can either, again, print it out from the link provided on the library's website, or you can draw your own and cut them out. You need arrows that draw to the left, that go to the right, and then one going straight forward. Make sure you make several of these. I'd shoot for probably 10 to 12 of each direction. Once your cards are all complete, it's time to play. Designate two pieces, one to be the searcher and the other to be the person they're trying to meet up with. Then introduce other elements into the board to serve as obstacles you have to work around. If you have Legos, you can build things or you can just use regular household items like these buttons. Now. The goal is to move your first piece across the board until it reaches your ending point or your second piece using the directional arrows. For younger kids, it might work best to do one directional arrow at a time and then have them move their piece. For older kids or kids who understand a little bit more, what they're going to do is create an entire chain of commands with the arrow cards and then move their piece according to the arrows and see if they end up where they think they will. Each block is one step or one forward arrow. Remember, when you do a turn, you turn in the square, but you don't get to move forward. You'd have to do a forward arrow first. Now this isn't gonna get me all the, the way there, but it will get me started. So we go forward, forward, turn to the left. Now remember this is the object's left. So turn to the left and then forward again. All right, so far so good. Let's finish it off. Let's see what happens. So we're going to turn right, remember it's the object's right and then we go forward turn left the objects left and go straight and there they are right next to each other because of the nature of the board you can repeat this as many times as you like changing up where the pieces are for the grids with more squares obviously it will take longer strings of code in order to get all the way to the end you could also, if you have multiple children, have them create challenges for each other or have them race each other to see who can get through their maze the fastest. This game provides excellent practice for sequencing, which is a really important part of coding where you're learning how to do those step-by-step -step instructions. It also helps children get some spatial awareness as they're trying to figure out which way is left and which way is right when it is not their own body that they are relating it to. I hope you enjoy and have fun. Thanks so much for watching.